What's up, wrestling fans? Welcome to another pay-per-view point edition of the Smart Out Moment Smack Talk podcast. We're going to get into WrestleMania. Backlash, at the very least, <laughs> for 2021. The pay-per-view is coming up this Sunday, so we're going to do our usual shtick here. We're going to give you the breakdown of the card as far as... Tuesday afternoon, around like 4 o'clock in the afternoon. We were recording this the day in advance. It's going to come up on Wednesday. But uh, we're doing that because of us, you know, scheduling stuff like that. Because uh, Rob's going to get his COVID shot. And that is way more important than us just being like, yeah, let's do the thing instead. <laughs> <You know? laughs> get your shots, everybody. Stay safe. And um, yeah, I am Tony Mango. Rob is here, as I just mentioned. Robert E. Felice. I am here, and I am going to get my COVID shot. But for this podcast, I want to be referred to as WrestleMania, Robert D. Felice. Because <laughs> we're just adding WrestleMania to everything now. And also on the podcast here, you know him, you love him, Cowboy WrestleMania, Callum Wiggins. <laughs> bang, bang. <laughs> oh, it's Mick Foley. <laughs> what we're doing? Uh, I would have made, I made, I made, I made like, some sort of screeching noise then. And uh, you would have been really happy to be right here on Smart Out Moment. Yeah, that's never happened. <laughs> <laughs> he teases because he loves. And we love you, too. And we are so thankful that you're listening to this podcast. And we want to know what you have to say about everything that we're going on here with WrestleMania Backlash. I'm just calling it Backlash. Screw it. And uh, what the best thing that you can do to tell us what you think about Backlash is to drop a comment below. Or whether you're following us on Facebook and Twitter and stuff, tweet at us, post something on Facebook, post something on the page on smartgamoma.com, you know, get your opinions out there and tell us your predictions and everything. And uh, while you're over on the YouTube video, at the very least, hit the like button, especially because if you like it, that's a good way to let me know that you like it. But it also helps with the YouTube algorithm that is just bonkers and you never understand how it works. There is the share button if you want to pass this along to somebody who you think might be interested in the podcast. There is the applause button if you want to give us a little tip jar, you know, uh, buy us a cup of coffee or something like that, essentially. Or in my case, because I don't drink coffee, a cup of hot chocolate. It's so much tastier, especially if it's got a marshmallow in it. And there is the join button, which you can si join the membership side of things. And that's the same exact thing as the Patreon. It's just a different sort of thing. Maybe you don't trust Patreon. Maybe you don't trust YouTube and you want to go to the Patreon thing, you know, whatever it might be. But even a dollar goes a long way in helping out the website. And I'm pretty sure that we give you guys at least a dollar's worth of entertainment in a month. So help us out in that way if you're able to. And, you know, if you want to toss some more spare change our way, there are the different tiers that are there as far as the Pick Your Poison tier where you can request something in particular for us to do. Kind of like how Marco has uh, the request that we already did for Fanboys Anonymous of the Scooby-Doo and the Alien Invaders fan tracks. Check that out on Fanboys if you're interested in that. That was really fun. And you can do the same thing on Smart Cut Moment. Obviously, you could do the same thing on Fanboys Anonymous, because I just mentioned that. That's kind of the whole point of that. And if you go to fanboysanonymous.com, they're the exact same setup of everything. A Facebook, a Twitter, the YouTube stuff. Hit the like button. Hit the subscribe button. Check out the Patreon. Check out the merchandise shops on TeePublic and Redbubble as well for Fanboys and Smart Cut Moment and A-Mango Tees. And then, uh, you know, whatever you're doing, help us out is not only greatly, greatly appreciated, but it actually helps out quite a bit legitimately on the morale side of things and on just keeping the lights on and making sure that we do more and better stuff over time. So if you want more from us, that's the best way to make sure that it happens. So WrestleMania Backlash is coming up this Sunday. And so far we have six matches confirmed on the card. I'm assuming we're probably not going to get any more until Friday. But right now, at the very least, before we get into the specifics about it, we know that we're getting a triple threat match for the WWE Championship between Braun Strowman, Drew McIntyre, and the champion Bobby Lashley. A triple threat match for the Raw Women's Championship between Asuka, Charlotte Flair, and the champion Ray Ripley. Cesaro is going to get a shot at the Universal Championship against Roman Reigns. Bianca Belair is going to defend the SmackDown Women's Championship against Bayley. We got the SmackDown tag titles on the line because the Dirty Dogs, Dolph Ziggler, and Robert Roode are going up against the Mysterios. And Damian Priest and The Miz will clash in a Lumberjack match. So first things first, how are you guys feeling about the card? Yeah. It's the, the name says it all, really. It's like a backlash card. It's Here's all the things that we can repeat from WrestleMania. Here's how we can make it different. And here's Cesaro getting a shot at the title because 
Edge and Daniel Bryan are not available. <laughs> I'll admit, I like it more than I thought I would. I figured that this was going to be legitimately copy and paste exactly what WrestleMania was, but half the matches where they would just do Lashley McIntyre, uh, Ripley, Asuka, Bianca, ba- um, Bianca Banks, Tamina and Natalia against Nia and Shayna, so on and so forth. And they tweaked a couple of things. It's still not the most amazing card in the world. And that's weird to say, because it's like, if you look at the people involved, there's not a bad performer in the mix. Like the lowest of the bunch would be Dominic. And it's like, oh, he's a kid. He's learning. And he's in a tag team match. So it's kind of like, you know, the potential is here. And I'll give them credit for doing something like, for instance, uh, the Lumberjack match where it's like, oh, let's let's spice it up a little bit and let's do something where it's not just a match. But it's six matches right now and we do have room for more. And I'm assuming we get two more matches, probably one on the kickoff and one on the main card, maybe even three more matches, depending on how long these go. So question number one, well multiple questions ahead of time question number whatever the hell question we're on at this point what matches do you think we're going to get added i believe we're going to get some form of intercontinental championship match i'm assuming a fatal four-way yes. yeah that's what I, I was yeah that's actually what i had in my mind as well i think it's going to be uh biggie kevin owens apollo cruz and, and king corbin Oh, that's not what I was thinking. Oh, you thought Sammy? You think yeah, Sammy? Yeah, I thought Sammy. Yeah, Sammy. It's, yeah, Sammy, Sammy makes more sense. It's just that King Corbin won that 10-man tag. That's just to keep him hot. I think it's Sammy. My theory with King Corbin is he... Uh, you know, well, well, I'll save it. I'll save it. I no, think we're getting that fatal forward, though. Tony. No, I don't think he's been winning money back. I think he's doing something else here. But uh, I think we're getting that fatal four-way. And we know that the SmackDown... Uh, setup is going to have the women's tag team title match, so that match shouldn't go on the card. <laughs> well, but it hasn't um, stopped them in the past, you know. Well, to mean you're in the tally win, then they might just do a rematch here. Right. I didn't put it past... Uh, you know, I was going to say maybe something with the Raw tag titles, but I guess Raw finished and they didn't really do anything with it. So maybe Again, not. it hasn't stopped them, though, from just being like on... Sunday afternoon on the bump, just being like, and by the way, AJ Styles and Amos are going to defend against Lucha House Party or something. And then, you know, it's kind of weird, though, that we got like the Viking Raiders just stopped existing again after three weeks or something. Happens sometimes. So they, I don't know what's happening with that raw tag title situation, but they could very easily do some kind of. Oh, right. Oh, yeah, they disappeared too. (laughs) Damn. Mason T-Bar haven't been there. Styles and Amas took the first like three weeks where they weren't there for unspecified reasons. Uh, there's the New Day. There's Elias and Jackson Riker. There's RK Bro. But I would have thought like if RK Bro would have gotten a title shot, they would have announced that ahead of time. That would have been like they beat the New Day to win it or, you know, something like that. We don't have a United States championship match right now, but based off of the way that things happened... I don't know what's happening with that, because if you didn't check out Monday Night Raw, Roberto Carrillo was fighting Sheamus, and he went for uh, an over-the-top rope sunset flip powerbomb on the outside, and instead fell on his ass and possibly broke his tailbone? Is that what I'm hearing right? Um, It depends on what you hear from people right now. According to um, uh, Meltzer on the Wrestling Observer, he's he could essentially work today if you wanted to so you just got banged up a little bit and yeah it was just it was it was a weird situation where obviously he landed badly and Seamus landed right on top of his legs Bro, yeah Seamus landing on him was the scary part to me yeah and so there was worries that he broke we, we not necessarily broken but he'd injured one of his legs or injured his back but at least according to what Meltzer said on the observer radio he's he's all clear and it was just like a scary instant like a stinger or something like that maybe my first reaction was I thought that Seamus landed right on his crotch and that it was just like, ooh, because I mean, anybody who's gotten that in the past, you run into By a situation, thing, let alone a giant person. 
Yeah, if you get uh, how how big is Seamus? Seamus is like you know two what like probably like two sixty or something like you know that that that's not gonna feel good. And I thought that he landed in a way where that was the case, and Korea was just doing what everybody would do in that scenario of just being like, nope, nope, not getting up, can't get up, I'm gonna throw up now, like that kind of thing. <laughs> Uh, if that would have been the case, that would have been that would have been really, really bad. Uh, but at least a better alternative to having some kind of other issues going on. Um, yeah, you don't want to be in a situation where you hurt your balls. You really don't. I, you don't really. No, no. You really want to take care of your balls, really. You really yeah. do. And if you really want to take care of your balls, you might be interested in our new sponsor here, because support for Smart Guy Moment is brought to you by Manscaped, the best in men's below-the-waist grooming champions of the world, for all the championships that we're talking about on this thing. <laughs> they have launched their fourth-generation lawnmower shaver, which I got the lawnmower 4.0. Uh, Callum and Rob have the lawnmower 3.0, so... All three of us can attest to trying this out and giving you the thumbs up and uh, the third leg up on this one as well. <laughs> and <laughs> what we got going on right now is a uh, sponsorship code where if you use the code SMARK, S-M-A-R-K, at manscaped.com, you get 20% off and free shipping. And that applies to all the different things. 20% off and free shipping on manscaped.com with the code SMARK. You got to use the code SMARK to be able to unlock your confidence and always use the right tools for the job, as they say. And this is the thing that uh, we're going to be talking about for a little while now, not only because it's something that uh, you know, is going on with the podcast right now, but it's something that we're having some fun with and we're enjoying this partnership. And we do actually want to give you something that we think that you would be interested in. I know that the uh, predominant most uh, people that are listening to this are something that we're speaking to the right audience here. You know what I mean? And look, uh, it's not something that you want to run into a situation where there's a problem. I've had some issues before in the past. I actually have four different shavers right now, as well as the, the lawnmower thing. And I can tell you from experience as great as the one I use on my face is for my face. I don't want to do that down below again. <laughs> that was uh, kind of like Wolverine decided to attack you know, in some ways. So this not running into the same problem. And I, I can't say from experience that I've tested it out with these guys, but I can say that they've said that that's the same kind of scenario. I did not do quality control on them to make sure. <laughs> No, and I was very disappointed about the whole experience. Well, see, you gotta have some things for the Patreon. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. I really did think we were bonding, though. <laughs> Look, here's the deal. You don't want any situation down there to be like blood and guts. So, man, <laughs> it does actually have the skin safe technology that takes care of everything. The trimmer is pretty quiet, all things considered. I think we've all used you know, shavers through the years that can be kind of loud. This is not one of them. And it, it gets the job done very well. And listen, trust us, because we're a bunch of tools. These are the right <laughs> tools for the job. And if you're interested, yeah. that's the noise. <laughs> I got it right next to me right now. Yeah, it, it just, it's, it's like completely seamless to use. It has like a little... Um, the three point in particular that had like the light flashing down into it as well, yeah. so you basically you have to make sure you're hitting all the, the right spots. Uh, just gives you a little bit of extra close attention. You don't you don't go into it with any fear or trepidation, especially after the first time. I know the first time it could be a bit of a sensitive <laughs> area, so but let's be honest, one, every time, time doing it, still be. yeah, yeah. After the first time using the uh, lawnmower, though, you're just going to be straight there doing it, just as casual as yeah, just uh, shaving your face in the in the morning or whatever stuff like that listen as a certified cowboy <laughs> you don't want your six shooter stuck in a bunch of tumbleweeds <laughs> so so take it from me it's fully approved uh best best stuff out there as far as i'm concerned for this job yeah they've got their uh what they're calling their advanced skin safe technology so it's not like somebody just decided to slap the word manscaped on another razor and it's you know some 
cheapo kind of thing. Uh, they stand by their products and we stand by them as well. So not only will your balls thank you, but we will if you use that code SMARK and get your 20% off and free shipping on manscaped.com. Help support the website, help support Manscaped. It is greatly, greatly appreciated for anybody who is going to be taking advantage of these kind of things that we got going on here. So thank you to Manscaped for sponsoring this. Thank you for everybody for listening to our plugs. And we are going to be having a lot of fun with these going forward. So stay tuned for lots of puns and lots of you know fun uh, things when we get into this. So um, on top of that, let's get into the Lumberjack match. I was going to go in another joke there, but I think I'm going to miss it. <laughs> Speaking of a bunch of tools. Uh, that wasn't the joke I was going for, but, you know. I'm sure it wasn't. <laughs> Damien Priest against The Miz. Here's where I think King Corbin is coming into the mix. I think that they haven't done anything with Corbin for a little while. And I am, the more that I'm thinking about it, immediately I wrote down Damien Priest wins when this happened. And then he said about the Lumberjack match. And then I'm thinking to myself, you know what? There's going to be a lot of people around from Raw and SmackDown, apparently. It doesn't mean that Priest is going to get his way with everything. Because in theory, The Miz shouldn't be able to beat Damian Priest if he's the smaller guy. We know that he's the weasel and all those other kind of things that go along with that. And the purpose of the Lumberjacks is to keep John Morrison out. But how often do we get where it's a cage match and it's like, that's going to keep that person out and they interfere anyway, or if somebody else does. I think Lumberjack matches always break down and I can imagine a scenario where Priest bumps into somebody like a King Corbin and in the chaos, somebody like a King Corbin helps the Miz win. So I'm going with the Miz beating Damian Priest. I'm I going to be the guy to go, well, Corbin's on SmackDown. Priest is on Raw. Does anybody care? I'm not saying I personally care. I'm just saying, can we have a little bit of continuity here? We do not- in the sense that Priest, when he said he wanted a Lumberjack match, he said, bring people from Raw, bring people from SmackDown. Yeah, but he said also bring like aliens and zombies, so I don't think E.T.'s going to roll him up in this match. I'll have that. I mean, they might. Uh, at the very least, it might be the ones from that Scooby-Doo and the Alien Invaders. <laughs> like Check that out on Fanboys. Check that out on FanboysAnonymous.com. <laughs> As long as they leave Lester behind, we're good. Um, <laughs> I don't know. I think maybe if they can get him, Bad Bunny pops up real quick, does another dive onto a pile of people, and finishes this feud properly. Either way, Priest has to win and move on to something better, preferably Sheamus and the United States title. Yeah, I don't know why this is happening. They've already... Like, WrestleMania should have been it for Damian Priest and The Miz. Like, Bad Bunny's not involved anymore, so why they still have to continue feuding? He's already beaten him twice in the past, like, couple of weeks as well. Well, like, he's beaten him in a singles match of the night after WrestleMania, and he beat him, I think, his first singles match on Raw. He beat The Miz as well. So they've basically been feuding for about three months at this point, and I'm pretty over it. A Lumberjack match. Lumberjack matches are historically one of the worst match types in WWE history. They just are always pretty dull and boring. It's like, oh, Miz gets thrown outside, or he gets pushed back in, or Damian Priest gets outside. He might get punched a little bit, and then he's thrown back in, and then it all just ends in a giant brawl at the end of it. I'm kind of hoping that the finish is going to be something involving John Morrison screwing up, because they seem to be fueling the the Miz and Morrison breakup angle. So, And that will end up leading to the Miz losing because I think Damian Priest definitely needs to win this. I hope that they don't split up. I like him better as a team. Well, I think that they're, they might just have a little bit of fun with it. Or maybe that's just me kind of convincing myself, you know? Yeah, that's you. <laughs> <laughs> why, why do you think they're going to give you something that you don't want to do that you want to say? That's true. <laughs> After, you know, 30 years of being a fan, I'm pretty sure <laughs> I know how things work at this point. Except for back in the day. Back in the day, I used to just have a lot of fun. Used to be like, oh, I like Brett and Sean and Taker and Stone Cold and whatever. Yay, they won. Brett! You know? (laughs) No, I wasn't that kid, by the way. Although I do have a friend of mine that has uh, a pair of the Bret Hart sunglasses. And he took the signature off of them. 
the hell were you thinking, Brett? <laughs> um, so we got uh, what? I'm the only one that's going with the Miz here, I think, right? Yep. Yep. Can't, can't be priced. That'll be the thing that makes or breaks for the Fantasy League. Check out the Fantasy League uh, draft, by the way, that we posted yesterday that we recorded about uh, 20 minutes ago. <laughs> yeah. Um, we got the SmackDown Tag Team Championship on the line. Dirty Dogs against Mysterios. This is one of those things where I feel like the Mysterios have to win, but it's still just like, damn it, why didn't you do it at WrestleMania? You know? And part of me thinks, despite the fact that they kind of need to win and we need to get some things going, they might not. But what makes me go, yes, they will pull the trigger, is that Jimmy Uso is back. I think the Mysterios hold these titles for basically... However long they want to wait until the Usos win the titles. So I'm going with uh, Dirty Dogs dropping the belts here. Dominic getting his first championship in front of nobody. But hey, you know, he still won a championship and it's pretty cool. Yeah, I'm I'm in I'm in two minds about this one in the fact that I think realistically based around the fact that it would be a nice it would be a nice moment and also due to the fact that the Usos are back and so they should get the titles pretty soon afterwards. The Mysterio the, the Mysterio should win this match. But part of me thinks that they just don't like giving us nice things. So I'm <laughs> kind of in that I'm kind of in that warp mindset of thinking, okay, this makes sense and I don't see any reason why they wouldn't do it. It's only the SmackDown Tag Team Championship. There's no harm taking it off the Dirty Dogs and putting it on Mysteri- the Mysterios. But that's exactly what they want me to think and that's why they won't do it. <laughs> So I think against my better judgment, I'm going for the dirty dogs here just because I think they just hate us. So, so I'm going to do that. That, in, that. That's my one, my one for this match. In another reincarnated life, Callum is that dog. That's like, you're giving me food. What's, what's the catch? Yeah, <laughs> like, exactly. I don't play it. Do you play them? No, I don't. Not at all. Mm-hmm. Fool me once. Shame on you. Fool me twice. You ain't going to fool me again. <laughs> Got an awful line. Let's say it's like it's not. There's there's no argument for me to do it other than the fact of why are they still holding the titles now? That's kind of my. I think it's like okay, they held. What well, they win the titles around about January, right? Uh, like yeah, start, um... right the start of the year. It was, either, it was either December or January. I can't remember what exactly, but they've held it for a good like three to four months. They've done absolute jack shit with those titles. And so, realistically, is the point of then should be dropping it to Mysterio and uh, both Mysterios. But I just feel like, why didn't you do this on the SmackDown before WrestleMania? Or, as, as Tony said, preferably on WrestleMania. I just feel, and maybe this is the moment they decide to, okay, we'll just, just fucking do it. Just put it on those two. But if they feel like they just want to keep these two down a little bit, because in their mind, it just will make the eventual moment seem bigger. I mean, maybe, they, maybe in their mind, mind, they're the ones that end up beating the Usos for the title when the Usos win them. With WWE logic, you can never bypass the idea that they drag something out as long as they possibly can. It reaches the fever pitch of they have to do it now or else it's not happening. And then they do it afterward. Because it's happened before where it's been like, look at Apollo Crews. It took him seven attempts to win the Intercontinental Championship. And at that point, it was like, dude, come on. You're not giving him the belt. And then they're like, nope, we're giving him the belt. And you go, what the? Uh, <laughs> you know. To pull another quote from uh, a movie that we've watched and we've reviewed. Once is happenstance, twice is coincidence, three times is enemy action. Uh, very well said. Does I, it uh does it ring a bell? Which movie? I I couldn't recall. I um I know it's one of them, but I can't tell you which. Kyle, okay, I'm gonna take a guess. Oh, I spaced out for a second there. I didn't even hear what you said. <laughs> it, it's one of um. Once is happenstance, twice is coincidence, three times is enemy action. Oh, I can't. Yeah, that's a uh, it's a good line. So I should remember it, but I don't remember which movie it was for. I'll say for your eyes only. It was from Goldfinger, the fourth edition, the third film of the A Review to a Kill podcast, which you can find on fanboysanonymous.com. Check that out if you're interested in the 007 franchise, because that's been a shit ton of fun for us to do. 
And um, I think at this point, if the Mysterios don't win, then something's up. So yeah, I'm going Mysterios. Uh, Callum, are you are you sticking with Dirty Dogs? Yeah, I'll stick with them. And Rob? A Mysterios. They have to. I, I'll be mad just because they should have done it at WrestleMania. If that was yeah. the case. But they have to. I think we're all going Bianca Belair retaining, right? Yeah. Yeah. Love Bailey. Nice. I hope she gets a lot of time to have fun. But Bianca. Yeah, I'm, I'm really looking forward to this match. I mean, I know we've seen Bianca versus Bailey on SmackDown a couple of months ago, but now obviously the championship's on the line, so it adds a bit more gravitas to it. And yeah, I think the they're two of the best wrestlers on the SmackDown brand, so I don't see what why this match wouldn't be particularly good. And yeah, I think that it's I mean it's obvious that Bianca's got to win because it just would be way too soon to drop the belt to uh, Bailey. But Bailey's a good first opponent for her, and I don't think. I don't think I'd be upset depending on how this match finishes because even though I would like to see Bianca win fairly convincingly, I wouldn't be upset with this feud extending for and maybe an extra month or so. Hey, Tony, how excited are you to add Sasha Banks to this mix and get Sasha and Bailey again in the route to a triple threat match at Money in the Bank? Or maybe they drag that out even longer. Um, we don't maybe know. Even longer. We don't know how this is going to work with fans in attendance, but. Mostly everything seems to be just kind of going, ah, fuck it, open up, you know? And I would assume if WWE gets an opportunity to do things before SummerSlam, they might, but they might not. That I don't think they will do. I think they're going to hold to their guns and just do SummerSlam. It's the biggest party of the summer because we're back for good. Right. If they want to go with the marketing thing like that, then that's a different story. And it might be a little bit too short of notice for them to get something for Money in the Bank or for Extreme Rules or whatever. I highly, highly, highly doubt that NXT TakeOver in your house, for instance, would take place anywhere other than the Capitol Wrestling Center. But, like, if they can get something in the area that they were going to do last year, because the Boston was Survivor, uh, not Survivor Series, um, SummerSlam last year, right? Yep. Maybe they're able to get Boston again for something like Extreme Rules. And if that's the case, maybe Sasha comes back then. But we don't know why Sasha's out either, do we? Um, just taking some time off, probably, right? Either taking some time off, maybe she's, you know, just working on other projects because she is getting busier now. She could be filming for The Mandalorian. We can only hope. And uh, maybe some of the spinoffs or something, depending on how they do that. I don't think so, but, you know, whatever it might be. Um. She could be banged up. Could be. You know, she could be cashing in all the money that she makes uh, at the bank. I don't know. But she's also somebody that I think could potentially win money in the bank. Because at some point, we got to win. Uh, we got to win. Like, we, we have to be the ones that win. Uh, we got to have Sasha Banks, money in the bank, money in the bank. Money, money, in, the banks. money in the banks. Yeah. yeah. Like... We got to have that. So maybe she comes back then. Maybe that factors into SummerSlam a little bit or something. But. I could see them dragging the Bailey thing out at least a little bit longer and not in the way that Bailey wins the championship to drag it out. I think they're literally just going to be like, yeah, just keep doing it because that's what they do these days. Just keep yeah. doing it. Well, I mean, the issue is they legitimately don't have anybody else on SmackDown that can really take this mantle on because the only other pushed act in the company is the tag team or on the SmackDown side of things is Tamina and Natalia. I mean, they could throw Carmella back into the mix again, but they don't seem to be wanting to do that. Isn't um, Carmella supposed to be feuding with someone? Because um, me and yeah, you yeah. announced Matt Dennis, you? Correct. So if they're going to be entering a feud with each other, that means that Bianca's Bi- Bianca's left on her own, really, with just Bailey as an option. Yeah, you know, who'd be a great option in this scenario? Mickey James. Oh, wait. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, well, can't can't have. I'd say we can't always have nice things. We can't have nice things in WWE. <laughs> like it's not even a case of always or sometimes. So, yeah, no nice things. Sometimes you can't have the things. Been a good choice. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know, would have been fun, but you know, not like you couldn't get uh, two full 
pay-per-views out of having the Iconics or anything. Yeah, or just them being in the tag team picture, which would free up like yeah, the Italians, really. I mean, who have been pushed very heavily recently. Yeah, good Natty and Bel Air match or something. Yeah, not that I'm necessarily keen on the idea of one of them getting a singles match with uh, Bianca, but then again, Bianca would win anyway, so it's just, it just, just a case of eating up to him. Yeah, for one shot, I'd be fine with like Bianca against Tamina, and they're trying to tell the story that Tamina's one of the strongest, and then she loses kind of a thing. Like, yeah, I'd much rather that than just uh, Bianca Bailey 15 times in a row, or yeah, maybe Nikki Cross moves over or something. She won a match on... Or no, did she win or uh, on lose on main event? I don't know. Hasn't aired yet. Whatever it might be. Nobody watches main event. Who cares? So I'm going Bel Air. So are you two guys. It's pretty self-explanatory. She's not dropping that belt. But it, it's not as self-explanatory when it comes to Rhea Ripley. Because Charlotte Flair is in the match. And you can never count out Charlotte Flair winning. Even if there's nothing that makes any sense whatsoever. Which isn't necessarily the case here. She's always a potential winner. And that's got me nervous. You know what? I like it. I like that Charlotte is that person that was always like, like, added on the scene to a match at one point was like, well, John can just win. And that's how I feel here. We're all in agreement Charlotte. at the very least. There's no chance Oscar wins, right? No. No. Yeah. No, that's uh, that's ridiculous. So you and suggest the idea. More than likely, whoever wins the match pins Asuka. You know, I, I would think so, but you never know. So, so I, I can't say that I'm particularly nervous about this whole situation just because I think Rhea Ripley has sucked as champion. And I know it's only been a month. But she's really, really bad <laughs> in in this in this role they have her in, where she's now a jokey champion, and just it's like they have no conception about how she got over in the first place. And the matches she's had with Asuka, for the most part, I mean, the one they had on the most recent episode of Raw was pretty good, but for the most part, their matches have been bad. And I don't think that Charlotte Charlotte is obviously a bit. I don't say rusty or stuff like that, but I imagine she will step it up for this match. And I think adding the triple threat dynamic will make it a better match for certain. I don't know who's going to win, so that makes it more interesting than a lot of the matches on the card. Because with a lot of matches, and it's usually the case with any pay-per-view card, you have a pretty firm idea about who's winning one way or the other. This one it is down to two out of three, but it's either Charlotte or it's Rhea Ripley. I don't really see the logic of having Charlotte win and then going straight into a feud between those two, whereas you might as well just keep the... Because at the end of the day, you might as well just keep the title on Ripley and continue the Charlotte feud, because that seems to be the way it's going. So, like, guns in my head, I'm going Ripley retains, but I think that the title will eventually find its way around Charlotte's waist. The thing that makes me a little less nervous now than I was a few days ago was Alexa Bliss. So, so wow. I, well, I've heard like competing theories about this. So a lot of people seem to think that Charlotte's uh, Alexa Bliss is going after Charlotte Flair. Why? Whereas what happened in that match is Alexa targeted Shayna Baszler. Thank you. She I mean, the whole she... knee thing. Yeah, she I did mean, her yeah. voodoo shit on, on Chain of Basler. I mean, but why is Callum the first person in the last 12 hours to say well, this? Well, no, I can't take credit. Uh, Brian Alvarez was the first person to, pull, to uh, call this out. Well, credit to Brian Alvarez for watching the fucking show. I don't <laughs> know how I, everybody was like, now, oh, well, cl clearly it's Charlotte. Now, it doesn't necessarily mean that she's going after Chain of Basler. It means that... She screwed. She screwed Charlotte Flair's team, mm -hmm. or at least that's the idea. So it could still mean that she's going after Charlotte. At the end of the day, I don't really give a fuck because I don't want Alexa involved in anything in this character. I want her to just be Alexa Bliss again because yeah. this bullshit is just not flying with me at all. I am not at all a fan of. Why don't we have Alexa do the fiend thing? The fiend thing is fun to do, and we don't have to have any kind of 
purpose for it because now we've established over the past couple of years that the fiend doesn't seem to serve a purpose other than bullshitting around for a week here and there well i'm not looking forward to the idea of not what of anyone but especially charlotte or rhea ripley having to quote unquote sell for a woman doing a i don't know lean backwards in the corner or a fucking puppet or a doll just like and then being had to, to play being terrified by all of this going on it's just this isn't 1992 anymore i do something you don't have to do something sophisticated just do something good you sure it's not a 92 apparently the blood and guts match set the wrestling business back 30 years yeah, I had a bone to pick with that as well. So, like, I, I, ha- I, I just love the goal of this company in a way to say, oh, Blood and Guts set the company back 30 years when they're literally doing a gimmick from 30 years ago <laughs> on their main program. Who said Blood and Guts set the company back 30 years? Apparently WWE Vince officials. And a lot of people, Vince and a lot of executives backstage in WWE. I'm, I'm assuming Vince and that, Bruce. That's a Pritchard, that's a Pritchard line. We know that everybody. we know that uh, Bruce doesn't like the more hardcore things as much. Well, so well, I'm assuming fair, that's it. I can I can at least um guess have some sort of credibility to Bruce saying it set the business back thirty years because he never left thirty years ago. So it's <laughs> like so he's still living in that time. So if anyone knows that time period of wrestling, it's him. Well, okay. I think that he is also one of the big proponents of the Alexa Bliss thing and the and the Fiend thing because he's very much into like uh, you know Kane and the Undertaker and everything. And I, I got a little bit of a feeling that maybe the whole Shayna thing is a way to have her screw around with Charlotte without Charlotte having to take a loss. And they might do some kind of goofy stuff here where it's like Ripley and Asuka and Flair are all fighting and we're, you know, we're getting our thing, whatever. And then Flair gets distracted from bliss and Ripley is able to pin Asuka. Well, we there's that element to think of. We also need to add the Sonya Deville element to the mix as well. Yeah. Because she's clearly doing things to try and get Flair the championship. Yeah. Which I'm so, not a fan of at all. So, yeah. So we need to understand... Is she, I mean, she's currently in an authority role. So now, well, one or two things are going to happen. One, it's going to be now Adam Pearce and Sonya Deville are going to be at loggerheads, and there's going to be some sort of match in the coming weeks or months over the, um, well, essentially being the authority on Raw or SmackDown. Obviously, not the real authority because we are the authority, of course. That's said that <laughs> two years ago. But um, yeah, remember how that was the whole we, we're not going to have general managers anymore and we're going to listen to you and things are going to change. And it's 11 o'clock, so screw all that. <laughs> yeah. Or she's just going to leave her role and she's going to become Charlotte's manager. So that seems to be the two paths that are going at the moment. And I don't know which one. I don't say that I'm a huge fan of either ones because I would rather just Sonya Deville was wrestling. But Me there too. must be some reason. There must be some reason for that not being the case at the moment. And maybe that's that's Sonya's decision, not not the company's. A lot to unpack there. So uh, I'll say really quickly: Blood and Guts didn't set the business back 30 years. It was a camera angle. Get the fuck over it. Secondly, <laughs> Alexa Bliss is gonna win the tag titles with the fucking doll. And I don't know how people don't see this. Alexa Bliss is going to win the tag titles with the doll. Because fuck women's tag team wrestling. Alexa, stop. And, you know, that's just... Are you saying that to your Alexa or that Alexa? I... All all (laughs) of them. All of them everywhere. Because this should stop. Because I thought, well, she's clearly targeting Asuka. Because she's going to need somewhere to go after Backlash. And then... Shayna just suddenly can't move, and damn it, I see where we're going here. Hopefully, though, the voodoo happens again on SmackDown, and Tamina and Natalya pick up the tag titles, which is a sentence I thought I would never say. Um, (laughs) Okay, now, on this triple threat, Callum is 100% right. Rhea Ripley, from minute one on this brand, has come off so goddamn robotic, Mm. and I don't know why. I think... you get I what think the it? reason why is because they don't want to commit to her being a babyface or a heel. But why is it that the performer gets on the main roster and it's like immediate stage fright? 
Like, oh, I am playing a character now, and I am talking like I see them talk on Monday night. It's, what happened? I, I'm not a fan. I hope Charlotte wins, quite frankly, because, yes, it does piss people off. And I'm starting to get, I'm starting to really just, like, good. I'm glad she pisses you off, and I want to see it happen more. So Charlotte should win, because people buy into Charlotte because Charlotte is real. The whole I am the opportunity thing, is it an old shtick? Sure, but it's accurate. And that's why Charlotte works. And I hope Charlotte wins. I have no interest in seeing more time dedicated to Charlotte and Sonya. So I desperately don't want Charlotte to win. I'm tired of the authority figure helping the champion out. I'm tired of... Look, Flair's great in so many ways. But I'll fully admit, I don't get captivated when she's cutting most of her promos. And the more time that she's champion and the more time that we're going to get more promos, the more time I'm going to be like, oh my god, Raw takes forever. <laughs> you know? Give me uh, give me Lindsay Dorado against uh, Angel Garza in a match that has literally no purpose to it whatsoever other than just wasting time, more so than a 20 minute promo where Flair says the same shit every week. See, as much as we are usually on the same page there, I do not want to see any more meaningless matches. I would much rather, as long as it's furthering storyline, give me promos, give me characters with something behind them. Because man, this thing where we just throw matches together and like, I can ignore half the show because yeah, they're just doing a long tag team match so I can eat and whatever. I'm tired of that. If I gotta sit and, and watch Raw for three hours, make it good. See, I'd rather there. be able to just do other stuff while that's going on than to go, okay, I sat there and I watched a 15-minute promo and she said the exact same thing she did last week. Well, in fairness, now this is where we get into the thing of uh, we have two different jobs. You can do different things, whereas my job is literally watch the show. And I, it's, it's boring. Give me Charlotte. Charlotte's not. Let's give uh, Rhea Ripley from NXT, and we'll all be happy. <laughs> I'll, I'll give you that. And well, uh, let's get the fucking NXT women's division here, and then we won't. Yeah, we'll be happy. Let's watch NXT. <laughs> <laughs> That's basically what it is. Also, I want to say this: this feels like the, and this is not a knock on Oscar. This is not a knock on any of the performers in the match. This is a knock on the way they booked the main roster. But this feels like it's going to end up being the wish version of the awesome triple threat match we saw at last year at In Your House. And I don't know. I, I just, I feel like this run with Rhea hasn't been good and I'm kind of ready to reset it. And let's do that by taking the belt off her and giving it to Charlotte Flair. Ultimately, I'm I'm sticking Ripley, but I'm sticking with Ripley only in the sense that if they go with Charlotte again, they're killing Rhea. She's not doing some great stuff right now, but if they that quickly go, we don't want you as champion, after Flair beat her last year, and they spent the whole last year not doing anything with her, and then they really half-assed at the last minute, two weeks before Mania, went, ah, I guess you are on Raw now, and you fight Asuka, It'll be like, all right, d don't keep her on Raw then. Send Rhea to NXT. Just let her stay there. So I'm yeah, I'm okay. thinking Rhea retains. She pins Asuka. Charlotte can bitch and complain and say, I didn't lose. And Sonya can be like, well, we'll try to set you up with a title match then because you didn't lose. And, that, you know. You know what, though? I'll say this. If it leads to Charlotte and Sonya become the tag champions, good. Sonya's great in the ring. Sonya's great as a character. Charlotte, same thing. Put them in the tag division. Yeah, I'm going to stick with Rhea Ripley retaining here. Again, not in a huge fan of her work so far, but I don't feel like it serves has any benefit to lose the championship here. And at the end of the day, Charlotte's going to eventually win it, and the feud's going to continue between her and Rhea anyway. So the only thing that's now going to be happening in this match of any real 
uh, at least I'll say some element of finality is that Oscar's going to get out of the raw title picture for a while, I imagine. Yeah, but that's kind of the only thing that's really going to come out of this match, regardless of whether Rhea Ripley or Charlotte wins, because the Money in the Bank is going to be Rhea Ripley versus Charlotte Flair. You know what's wild? Uh, th- yesterday was the year mark of Money in the Bank, which means today, as we're recording this, is the year mark of Asta winning the title and being in the raw t- title picture. It's and Becky full year. leaving. and Yeah, it's been a full year. And in some ways, I couldn't even tell you anything she's done on Raw. And that's a shame because they should have been better to Asuka. But as much as I want Charlotte to win, I, we do have some stakes on this for the Fantasy League. So I'm going to play it smart and go Ripley. So then the uh, you're thinking it's uh, Flair and Ripley at Money in the Bank. Um, Flair didn't win Money in the Bank yet, right? Nope. No. The one so that she, she hasn't done. Win that. I'm thinking that might be a way to do that. And maybe Ripley doesn't defend her title on that card. I don't know. I mean, Obviously, we're going to see this weekend what happens with this. Because for all we know, the friggin' puppet wins the championship. And then we got a whole other thing on there. Yeah, someone wins. The, whoever wins Money in the Bank, the whichever women wins, uh, wins uh, the Money in the Bank. She opens up the briefcase, and Lily's in there. That's totally gonna happen. <laughs> you, you laugh. I'm not being. That's Calvin's onto something. That's going to happen. Becky pops out, and Becky is Lily the whole time. <laughs> We got Roman Reigns against Cesaro for the Universal Championship. I think uh, we're all leaning more towards the idea that Roman Reigns retains here, but that this match should do some wonders for Cesaro. He'll he'll look good, and there'll be at least one moment where it seems like he could have won. Maybe the referee's down. Maybe they're doing some kind of interference with Jimmy and Jey Uso. They've been really doing this thing with Roman where Roman lost a lot of his credibility once he turned heel and he can now only win matches with like cheating and whatever, which I'm not a fan of, especially when you've had like Brock had no problem with that, but you're, you're making Roman kind of a weasel in some ways, but I am fully expecting Roman to retain here and Cesaro to be like, ah, man, he almost got it kind of a thing. Uh, Right guy, right place wrong time yes that's what paul Heyman has literally said about this man but it's accurate isn't it put him against drew mcintyre and you think well fuck he can win yep put him against lashley and you might even think we could see we've seen lashley lose we know he's not infallible anybody against tribal chief roman right now (laughs) just feels like he's being fed it's a return to the anyone but roman (laughs) You put him against anybody but Roman Reigns, and Cesaro's got a shot. This match should be one of the better ones of the Thunderdome era. Cesaro deserves this. I believe that he and Roman could put on a very special match. I'm not a fan of the low-blow guillotine combo for Roman right now. I'd rather him win with the spear, one, two, three. But even if he's got a pass out in the guillotine... Cesaro is going to have a great moment here. And I already have to eat my words because I said, well, they gave him the win over Seth and they'll probably never do anything with him after that. Let's let's see what happens. And right away, they gave him WrestleMania backlash. And I'm excited for this more than any other match. I wish they'd play a little bit more on the Heyman-Cesaro relationship and the fact that Heyman could literally say, look, I wanted the best for him. But there are certain guys that just evolved beyond. And Cesaro is one of those guys that stays behind. I had to go back to Brock Lesnar to do greater things. And now I'm with Roman Reigns because Roman Reigns is going to do greater things. That's one promo I wish we could have gotten. But this is, this is the match of the night by far. Yeah, I'm totally... Very, very excited for this match just because two of the top guys in ring at the moment, Cesaro is just unbelievably awesome. And this is his first one-on-one opportunity at a world championship. Crazy, so, isn't it? 
and I know it's crazy, but it's just you know that he's gonna go balls out to essentially uh, hopefully she's in manscape then. Yeah, but, uh, <laughs> you beat me to it. I was like, huh? <laughs> but um, yeah, I think he's going to just be like firing on all cylinders because of this opportunity and the fact that he does get this big match. He'll probably, I, I'm hoping it's the main event because I think it deserves that treatment. Um, I do agree with Tony to an extent that Roman has been given too much of the classic heel can't win on his own trope. And I mean, I, I love the thing on the um, most recent episode of SmackDown where Cesaro just essentially cleared house on him, both at U- Usos because it does what? just make him look good. Wasn't he needs... that fucking great? I mean, I, I can gush yeah. over Cesaro all day. Yeah, just great. And carry on. Yeah, and also when you're in a position where you have a, I don't want to say a weak challenger, but a challenger that nobody thinks is going to win, you have to give them all the stuff in the world to try and make you believe in for a split second that he's might win the championship here. So I appreciate that happening, and I appreciate the build to this as well. With obviously the interlude with Daniel Bryan and all that stuff, but Roman's looking. Yeah, I, I think Roman's credibility was helped by the fact that he essentially won that match against Brian fairly cleanly. So I can pretty much, I pretty feel like, okay, Roman can get it done, but he doesn't want to get his hands dirty. That's his thing. It's that, uh, it's that change of mindset for me between a heel that can't get the job done to a heel that can get the job done, but chooses not to. And I think Roman's kind of um, skating the line between those two at the moment. So Roman Reigns can rest for the next 12 months. On the fact that he literally stacked Daniel Bryan and Edge at WrestleMania and pinned them. There was definitively he won that match. Definitively he beat Daniel Bryan. I think Cesaro needs to come out swinging, no pun intended, and mm. kind of kick his ass for 10 minutes straight, where it's just like, oh my God, Cesaro is on fire. Roman is in trouble. Almost like the Brock Lesnar matches towards the end, where like Drew McIntyre just killed him in five minutes. Cesaro needs to do a version of that. And then Roman Reigns can come back, kick his ass and win. But Cesaro needs to look strong here because he needs to stay strong after this. Yeah. They can't rest on the laurels of he got his title match. Now he's good for forever. He needs to look strong. Isn't that sad? This is the second month in a row where we're already like, all right, how are they going to kill him off? But not really by saying, but we gave him this. Here's the consolation prize. That's mm-hmm. too much of a trope, and that needs to stop, too. I do think that they're still going to go down that road, but hopefully he'll look strong enough that people will buy into it instead of them being like, you know, hey, for the first time ever, we're getting, a, you know, Tamina against Shayna Baszler on SmackDown. You're like, I don't care. <laughs> like, they fought already a hundred times. Or like, you know. So, Reigns, whatever. If he wins with a guillotine, if he does a low blow and a pin, if he does, a, you know, outside interference, whatever. I think ultimately Roman Reigns does retain that championship. But Cesaro ends up walking out being like, I almost had you and you know it. Kind of a thing. Yeah, How crazy is it going to be if that title changes hands, though? Oh, it would be massive if Cesaro was to win the title. It would be... I, I would say it would stand out as, like... Obviously not unbeatable, but it would be a hard thing to beat into, like, moment of the year. Just because... Just because it's Cesaro. If, it's, if it was some other person, then I don't think it would hit as much. But the fact that it's the guy who's always been we've always been told is so unbelievably talented in ring, but is never going to be trusted with like, is never going to reach the brass ring. Is never going to be trusted with to, to run with the ball and see how far he can get with it. And for him to be essentially the company's golden goose would be a monumental thing to happen. But the reason why that thing is so unbelievable and would be so monumental is because it's almost certainly not going to happen. Yeah. If it does, we're going to get some good reactions afterward on the post show. Yeah, it's just going to be like, Dude. my fantasy leave is already fucked. But, yeah. you know, <laughs> I, I would allow it because Cesaro deserves it. 
there are some people from that era of the indies that I just don't understand how we're still talking about Cesaro can be the guy. You know? Like, here's a guy who we wanted to see him fight Punk. Punk's been gone for so long. We're still like, maybe Cesaro. When was that uh, Stone Cold podcast with Cesaro? Uh, with, with Vince about Cesaro? Yeah. It was 2014. Jesus. So it was seven, seven years, years ago. That Austin was saying, why haven't you pushed Cesaro yet? Yeah. And that was seven years ago. I mean, it was almost, what, eight or nine that Punk wore the Cesaro shirt doing WrestleMania press. Cesaro deserves this, and I just don't feel like he's going to get it. And I, I think we're just supposed to believe that this is okay. And not to keep, I keep bringing up Tamina today, but Tamina's another one where it's like, is that the lesson now? Are we telling the Liv Morgans of the world and the, I don't know, Santos Escobars of the world, hey, if you just stick around, we'll eventually get to you because we'll have no other fucking choice. <laughs> like, I, I want Cesaro to win, and that's why I'm so mad that he's up against an unbeatable guy right now. And we're all still going, Roman. It's it's Roman. <laughs> oh yeah, tops out you, Roman. Yeah. Now uh, we have the triple threat match: Lashley, Strowman, and McIntyre. Oh, fuck this match. I uh, why why fuck this match? Because it's this is a boring match. Drew McIntyre has become like Triple H towards the end in terms of his in ring style, where it's just all right. I do a few key moves, a, a setup, and I have this you know big finish move. Uh, Lashley's great, but without the hurt business, it slowly dwindled down to okay, he's just another heel champion. At least he doesn't cheat too much to win. And I don't like Braun Strowman. Braun Strowman is straight up big show territory for me now, where it's like he's the big guy they put in the matches when they want to make it seem like, you know, who's a believable guy? This big guy. But we're never going to give it to him. And if we do, it'll be the most boring thing you've ever seen. Fuck this match. <laughs> I like all three. Uh, <laughs> I'd be fine with any of them winning. I do think that uh, Bobby Lashley's retaining, though. I think that um, whether it's like a distraction with MVP that he can capitalize on, or you know, if they go into the triple threat kind of side of things where it's no DQ, maybe like Braun and McIntyre do some kind of big move to each other, and they're both taken out, and Lashley capitalizes. I can't imagine that Lashley drops the belt right now. No, I, I think that... I, I can't say for certain like how I see the flow of the match going, but if I was to guess, I would suggest that Lashley is going to retain, but it's going to be in some way where Drew... Where, where I think that it will lead to a Money in the Bank match between Lashley and Braun Strowman one-on-one. -on -one. Because even though they've had matches recently and Lashley's beaten him pretty convincingly in both, I feel like they're going to like build that up because they'll want to keep take Drew out of the program because Drew has already faced Lashley at WrestleMania and so they might want to leave him out for a couple of weeks. Maybe he gets taken out in the match boy, the now missing in action Mason T bar. They make their return and just take him out or oh, they're gonna do that to um, Long awaited uh, free and B reunion by having Jinder Mahal take out uh, Drew McIntyre in this match and start um, that feud between those two. I'll say um, this that, that's a match I only want to see if the belt is involved. That means so little without a title. But yeah, so I think that, well, I think that that's, might be a potential direction they end up going with. So I just see Lashley winning possibly by pinning or like having some sort of uh, shenanigans involving him beating Drew and then you lead into the match with Strowman at Money in the Bank but yeah that would be my prediction right now what I would like to see happen Drew McIntyre wins and we don't do Lashley and Strowman ever um, <laughs> and what I think will happen is Bobby Lashley wins and Hopefully, again, we go another route. Go with 
I mean, Ricochet is on the roster. Sheamus, he, Randy Orton, Matt Riddle. There, there's anybody. Just get him away from uh, McIntyre because I've seen it enough. And Strowman, I just... I don't know where he lost me, but he lost me. I fell off the Stroman Express at some point because uh, it's, it's not doing anything for me. So then uh, that's at least the card that we know right now. They might change things over the next few days. And of course, if they do, more than likely they'll change some of the card on SmackDown and then we'll address that on the hot tags. And if they announce anything else in the meantime after that, then we'll talk about that just when it ends up happening because well, I've already done the last podcast for that, but anything will be updated on smartcountmoment.com. I'll have my usual stuff on EWN and Bleach Report. So, you know, okay, be up to date. You know, you're going to find multiple different ways to be able to know what's going on with this without having to watch the show. So it's a little bit more convenient on that end. And we will um, obviously do our post show that we're doing and we're going to do that live the way that we've been doing things recently. So, Stay tuned for that as immediate uh, after the pay-per-view is over as possible. It might take us, you know, five minutes. It might take us five, 10 minutes, depending on what it might be. But generally speaking, it's usually about five minutes or so after the pay-per-view ends. And we'll be having that up on the page here on smartcoutmoment.com and on the YouTube channel. So if you are not subscribed to the channel already and you don't have that little email notification thing checked off, Go ahead and do that because that way you'll know exactly when we go live for sure. You'll get an email that says, hey, you know, Smart Guy Moments live right now doing the pay-per-view point post show. And we will address anything that does happen, whether we liked it or didn't like it. I mean, what you do is the same thing in the comments below here. Drop a comment. Tell us your thoughts on the predictions. What other matches you might get on the card. Who's going to walk out with the belts? Blah, blah, blah. You know the score. And... If you're following all the other things that I've got going on on Smart Cut Moment and FanboysAnonymous.com, you could also follow me at Tony Mango, and you could follow what these guys have going on on their social media accounts and everything else that they've got, uh, cooking and in the broiler, and you know what it broils down to. <laughs> That's what well, I should say. Here's what I've got going in the broiler: a nice juicy steak. No, I wish I did. Ooh, but that'd be good. Check out Fightful Select, because Sean Ross Sapp is cooking up a whole lot of scoops every single day. And check out Fightful.com if you want to see where I am all days throughout the week. Check out WrestleZone.com, as I always have content up there as well. And follow me on Twitter and everywhere at Dude Felice. I really want to do something related to Twitch. I'm working on getting all the graphics together for that. And my hope is that by June... We're doing something cool. And so, you know, follow me. Tell me what you want to see on there. Tell me what, you know, maybe we'll do some wrestling watch along. Like, I'll watch really anything. So just follow me along. Hit me up. Hopefully we're doing something cool. But if you want to see other cool things that I've done in the past, check out what Callum Wiggins is going to tell you about. Yeah, so the cool things we've done in the past are, of course, 2001 of Wrestling Odyssey and the Paul Heyman Smackdown podcast are two retro series over in the Smart Camp Moment archives. Whether you watch us along on YouTube or you check out the, the podcast feeds, you'll be able to find them somewhere down there. There's hours upon hours of retro-based wrestling content where we go back to the years 2001, uh, Smackdown from 2002 to 2003. So all of that stuff, get that in your ears. And yeah, it's just great stuff to listen to. Other than that, check out smartcountmoment.com for all of the weekly articles, including the power rankings, my weekly contribution, and also to keep track of all the goings on in the fantasy league when that all gets up and ro uh, like roaring underway straight after uh, WrestleMania Backlash. That's the first show of the new season. And yeah, follow me on Twitter at Wigmaster14. Cool, cool, cool. And we will see you when we see you, everybody. Make sure you drop your comments about also what you would like to see next week because we have a blank week at least right now and uh you know we're going to try to take those into consideration and try to plan out what is coming for the next main event beyond the pay-per-view stuff that we've got for this but hot tags coming up next on friday night pay-per-view point coming up after that and then rolling along with everything else on smart moment and fanboys anonymous and everything so we will see you when we see you but for now this has been another smart out moment and we're being counted out.